Why, hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial. A while back, I did a tutorial about view layers in Blender, and I used text, um, and I sped some things up because the tutorial was about view layers and not necessarily shading or anything like that. And the response that I received back was that that was unhelpful. So we're gonna redo that tutorial here, and I'm gonna narrate over it. Um, as you can see, I've got Blender 2.8 open and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my cube and my light here and hit X and delete. And then I'm gonna grab my camera. I'll hit N on my keyboard and then come here to the rotation and set all of that to zero, all rotation and locations to zero so that it's there at the origin. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit R and X and I'm just gonna rotate that positively along the X and type in 90. And now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna take a look at my image that I'm gonna be using. So I'll come here to the properties and where it says image, I can see the width is 2,976. So
call this monkey underscore shader. And let's go ahead and just get a little, oh, uh, I made a mistake there, as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this back right there. And then I'm gonna turn this lock camera to, to view. There we go. Now I can move around within the camera view, but I'm not moving the actual camera. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A and add in a noise node. We'll hit Shift A and add in a ramp node. Hit Shift A and add in a bump node. We'll hit Shift A and add in a magic texture node. Uh, Shift A and add in a mix shader and shift a and add in a boroni texture okay that's good so i'm going to take all of these and go ahead and connect them up taking the noise color to the factor and then taking the color ramp to the height of the bump, and then I'm just gonna disconnect this here for a second and go ahead and take the bump and stick that into the normal, stick that into the um, roughness, and then uh, I'm going to take this principled and hit Shift D, duplicate it, and take the magic texture and stick, oh wait, take the color ramp, shift D, bring that up here, and then take the color and stick it right there, and also the bump. We're just trying to find an interesting result. Same thing, normal, and roughness, and now, I'm gonna take the BDSF down here and stick that into the bottom of the shader. The BDSF up here, stick that into the top and grab my Boroni texture. Oops, that's the wrong thing. And stick the color into the factor. Okay, and then come to my render engine and change that into cycles. Save one more time. And then I can go ahead and stick this into the material output and nothing changes shift s one more time and that's because i need to come here to my rendered view and you can see that there's interesting looking um thing interesting looking shadows but that's not quite what we're looking for because we need some light so i'm going to hit one on my keyboard and I'm gonna hit Shift A and add in a light, an area light, and then R, and I'm gonna rotate that in a negative 90. And then I'm gonna scale it up because I know that when I took this picture, it was in a room with some pretty big windows. So I'm gonna hit G and I'm gonna put a light right there. And then Shift D and X. I'm sorry, Y, and put a second light there, and then grab both of them, hit seven on my keyboard, and G and X, and pull them back. Okay, hit Control S, and now if we go to rendered view, we can grab our light and take the strength here to a thousand. Uh, take it up to 10,000. Okay, same thing here. The area, this other area light, add in two zeros, 10,000. And perfect. All right, so now we'll grab our ground plane. Hit Shift S or Control S to save ground plane. Come here to the mesh properties, cycle settings, and down here, turn on shadow catcher. And you can see that it disappears, just leaving the, the shadow. Um, and then 
The other thing we have to do is come here to the, uh, we have to come here to the render engine settings and under film, turn on transparency. And now we can actually see our picture behind that and we can see what it looks like. Okay, you can see that we have one problem that our shadow is kind of getting cut off because our, our plane is not big enough. So we'll hit S and X and we'll just scale that out. Okay, then we'll grab our monkey head again, hit Control S to save, and we're gonna go ahead and change some colors. Let's change this to a green, and you can see immediately that uh, where this Veroni texture is has changed the green there, and then we can change this to maybe a darker green, maybe more of a blue. Okay, and then we can take the scale of this up to maybe 10. And then the bump of the magic texture, let's take the strength down to 0.2. Yeah, so that seems like it's, it's something at least. So let's go ahead and messing with our view layers now. So I'm gonna come back here to Shaded View, hit Control S and come to Collections and add in a new collection. And this one I'll call um, Props. And I'll put my camera in there and I'll add in both of our area lights. Okay. So now this first view layer, I'm gonna call it Monkey. And then I'm going to add in a second view layer by hitting this little button next to it. And I'm going to call this ground plane. So if I come back here to monkey, then I'm going to go ahead and come here to this ground plane group, right click and under view layer, I'm going to hit set exclude. And what that's going to do is you can see that it disappeared. Um, and it's only going to render the monkey head here uh, without the ground plane. And then next, I'm going to come here to ground plane. You can see everything goes back to normal. And I'm going to come to the meshes group and right click and go to view layer and then set holdout. And what that means is it won't render the monkey head. So all you'll see is the plane with the shadow that comes from the monkey head. So. Uh, let's go ahead and hit Control S and come here to tab and click denoising. And then in the render view, let's go ahead and just change the render to 32 samples. And then here with the light path, we'll give one to diffuse and glossy and zero to transparency. And then we'll give two and four, something like that. We can leave everything else, it doesn't really matter. Okay, we'll hit Control S to save, and then let's go ahead and render that out by hitting F12. Okay, there we go. So you can see the render has finished. And if I wanna come up here to this slot, I can click the ground plane. And you can see that that is there. And the monkey is here. And I'm just gonna come here to image and save as, and I'm gonna call this one monkey.png. Let that save. And then grab the ground plane image, save as, and ground plane. Oops. Okay, let that save. So I can X out of the render view here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my 3D view and change it to see the image editor. And I'm gonna select 
Oh, wait, and select that. I'll take, take the shader and come down here to compositing and I'll click use nodes. Um, and then the first thing I'm going to do is hit shift A, search and add in a viewer node. And then up here at the top, I'm going to select viewer node. And then I'm going to hit shift A again and add in an image. So I could have, I could do this. You can select your monkey or ground plane render or view layers from down here. But since I already saved everything out, um, I'm just going to X out of this and I'm going to duplicate this three times. The first thing I'm going to open up is the image, open image. The next one that I'm going to open is the ground plane. And finally, I'm going to open up the monkey. All right. And then I'm going to hit shift a search and I'm going to add in a alpha over wrong one alpha over. There it goes. I'm going to take the image of this one. I believe, no, 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 nope. It's the other way around. Shift D, duplicate that. So this one comes to the, the bottom. Well, let's start out like this. We've got our monkey and our ground plane, and we can use the alpha over node to go ahead and merge those two together. And then what's great about this is since we have the two separated, let's say that I, I feel like the shadow is too deep. Oh, here we go. This is how you do it. Okay, so let's rearrange these here. So we have the, the bottom node, or the bottom socket is the top, the top one. So um, if I feel like this shadow is too bright or not dark enough, I can hit shift A and add in a gamma node and stick that in between 0.2. You can see that I can change the darkness of my shadow, but nothing else selected. I can, I can also add in a hue saturation node and I could change the hue, add in, make that number 0.7 and you can see that I can change the color of my monkey without any issues. So anyway, that is how you use view layers in Blender. You use your collections to go ahead and Come down here to the view layer toggle and either exclude it or set holdout. Um, if you don't want something to be in a view layer, you can right click and come here. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if this helped you out at all. And I will see you next time.